The following program is a Town of Colony television production of the William K. Sanford Town Library. Welcome to Getting to Know You. My name is Joe Nash. Today we're talking to Patrick McNamara of the Sylvan Learning Center. In, they have offices in Albany and Clifton Park. They offer um, tutoring and math, reading, write, um, study skills and writing for our high school kids. And they also have test prep. And today we're going to be talking about the SAT mainly because it has changed in this March. Um, all new. It's been revamped, revised, re-everything, so welcome. Thank you. Patrick, why don't we start with, um, before we talk about the changes in the SAT and why people should take it and everything, just talk a little bit about, is this, how, when was the last time the SATs were changed? This is the first time they've been changed in about 10 years. Okay, okay. Um, the SAT, just sort of generally, the SAT and the ACT are two tests that most colleges require as part of their application process. You don't take both, you take one or the other. Um, in the Northeast, the tradition has been most kids take the SAT. Because the rest of the country? Other parts of the country, the Midwest, they don't know anything about this. Has it always been like that? Yeah, I, for a very long time. Really? I suspect it's probably because you take what your friends are taking. Okay. And so it just, for whatever reason, people in the Midwest started taking the ACT, and their friends did, and so that's why okay. they do. But well, in other parts of the country, it varies. And certainly there are kids in this area who take the ACT. Yeah. They are they're doing the same thing, but they do it in different ways. Um, for example, the ACT has a science section. Uh -huh. So kids who are really strong in science might want to show that, and so they, they take that uh -huh. section. Okay. Uh -huh. We sometimes have kids come in, and they will take a diagnostic test, which means a full test. They'll take both um, on different days, because they're yeah. four hours. So, but this way they can see, does one test just feel better yeah. to them? Yeah. So for example, the ACT, the first section, in, which is reading comprehension, is um, 75 questions long. And there are some kids who that just wears them out yeah. and they do very yeah. poorly. So it varies. OK. Well, um, I'll, I'll be showing my age here. I, I took the SATs 40 years ago. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I know they're different now. You can use calculators and everything. Right. So why, um, I, the one thing I've been doing, a little research here, right. the things I see the most um, the, in the changes are these terms evidence-based, data analysis, and relevancy. So why are they making all these, these big changes? Sure. Um, the criticism of the SAT test had been that it was not showing what kids have actually learned, that it was disconnected from what was happening in school. Um, part of that is because its history was it was originally an aptitude test. Mm -hmm. Now, they had dropped the aptitude from the name. It was originally the Scholastic Aptitude Test. Oh, okay. And they dropped that some time ago. And it's just the SAT doesn't stand for anything as far as they're concerned. So, um, and so another example was the uh, vocabulary section. Vocabulary, they were testing you on a very obscure words that you would not use in real life. <laughs> and so if you prep for the course, you know, we knew what they were. Yeah. So people were cramming those words. And then... It, so it was showing you what? Not, okay. not much a lot. And ultimately, people were complaining that it was perhaps culturally biased. Okay. Um, certainly was something that you could prep for. Um, so all those criticisms, they, the SAT people decided to address. I suspect, although they've never said this, in part because the ACT was becoming more popular. Oh, okay. And so they said, OK, we're going to revise it. And they did rather dramatically. Um, they say that the test now better reflects what kids learn in school. And learn in 2016? In, right, 2016. Okay. Well, th all the way through. Okay. So, <laughs> and they have um, aligned it with the Common Core standards. Um, so just as Common Core has been very focused on evidence-based testing. Mm -hmm. So basically saying, here's a text. Read the text. Show that you can understand it, so your reading comprehension is good, but also show that you can analyze it and manipulate it. So there might be a text, and then there may be a related graph, and then there may be a question that re requires you to understand the text, look at the graph, 
interpret it, mm -hmm. and then answer it another step. So it's a multi-step question. So I noticed I was when I was reading about it, they're actually testing you on some of these reading things. They're asking you on what is in that thing you're reading. Not you don't have to refer to prior knowledge. Exactly. Made. That's the other thing they're trying to limit the extent to which what you learned outside the skills you learned outside are applied. But you know, knowing Pride and Prejudice and what Pride and Prejudice you know, means and what the characters were doing, et cetera, where before, for example, on the essay, yeah. that was a very valuable thing. They've now changed the essay. So the essay is um, based on your analysis of a specific argument that someone from history has written. Um, and you have to show that you understand the argument. And you have to now show you also understand how the argument was made and then come up with um, an essay that shows those two, those two primary things. You will then be graded on, do you show a clear understanding of the material? Did you analyze the material well? Did you understand how the writer had actually um, made their argument? Oh, okay. And then also your writing style. Do you actually write well? And it says here, you know, one of the things you sent me, yep. this term here, I, I don't know if this is the vocabulary or the writing, but this term here, real world context. What is, right. What is that? So vocabulary used to be, do you understand, do you, do you know what these words are? They're almost definitional. Um, now the words will be used, be, some of them will be tough words, but they will be used in a paragraph, a sentence. And so you, you have to show that you understand the word from the context. So oh, okay. the, one of the examples I give is um, somebody might say that person is really intense. You also might say that person has an intense concentration. Mm -hmm. okay. Those are different things. And they want to know that you understand the difference. Um, so that, that's the kind of thing they're talking about. They won't say, what, what does the word intense mean? They will say, what does the word intense mean in that sentence? So the vocabulary now isn't like a multiple choice? No. It's, well, it's still multiple choice. But it's used, it isn't just the word. And, exactly. You, oh, you, and you will understand it not sitting off by itself. Oh, Part okay. of that is to give you help. It helps you yeah. guess better what it is. But it also is testing you, do you understand perhaps the subtleties? OK. Jeez, I wish they had that one on us. <laughs> right. I was doing well, another term. I, I see here for the math part, on, it says math that matters most. Is that sort of like? Well, I, I think you know that that's a catchphrase. Um, the math has changed um, in several ways. Uh, one way is uh, it now has two sections. One section you're allowed to use a calculator. Mm -hmm. The other section you're not. Um, so that's that's different. They want one you really need to mm -hmm. use a calculator. Um, it is much more algebra focused. Um, there have been studies that show kids who do well in algebra mm -hmm. um, are much more likely to uh, be successful in college. Okay. Um, so there's that. They have also expanded it. Before the SAT was only through geometry. Now it's through trig, trigonometry. Okay. Um, most kids take this in the 11th grade. So by the spring of the 11th grade, which is the popular time to take it, um, you will have pretty much finished your trick course. Um, so there's that. The other thing that I think gets more to your point is they want people to show that they can do more than solve formulas. Mm -hmm. um, life doesn't give you formulas. Life gives you word problems. Life gives you a database and then a question that requires you to interpret the database. Um, trig and algebra and perhaps some geometry might be required to answer those questions. But most questions in real life are multi-step. You have to understand that, then you have to think about it, then you have to actually solve, you know, understand which formula applies, okay. and then solve. So they have created sections that they believe will better show, are you a student who has learned the material so that you can actually use it in real life? So in your, so this is your business, mm -hmm. do, you know, do you know anything about why perhaps was a criticism getting, was there a groundswell for this? Yes, there was. For this um, more reflecting what kids are actually knowing as opposed to I Look at the SAT is a very important test. Um, it, it is part of what decides whether you're admitted into any particular mm -hmm. college. Um, colleges focus on grades first. Um, and they focus on a lot of things. They look at a whole application. But one of the things they're looking at is, well, how did you do in the SAT or the ACT? Um, typically, a site, a website, I'm sorry, the college's website will say the middle 50th percentile um, got a range of SAT scores between X and Y. 
And so when you're looking at a college, you know that if, if you, you want to go to so go there, yeah. they're really going to probably expect you to be in that range. Are they going to accept some kids yeah. who are outside, either above or below? Yes. But those kids have another hurdle to get over. So it, it's giving the colleges a little more idea of well, how do you match up against other students who are applying from all over this country, probably. Um, because if you think about it, you know, a 3.5 at one school is not necessarily equivalent to a 3.5 at a different oh, yeah. school, because some schools are more competitive. Well, some colleges, some colleges are aware of certain schools, but not, not at the level that they really need to be. Um, and so this is to give them another thing that they can look at and say, OK, this test was the same test for everybody. And we're, that's why we're going to look at the score. Now, they know some kids do not test well. Um, and so you have plenty of kids who their grades and their SAT scores don't really match up. Mm -hmm. You would expect somebody who has you know, a 3.8 to get a very high percentile in their SAT scores. And sometimes that doesn't mm -hmm. happen. But usually, the two correlate. I see. And then that brings me to this question. Yep. I, it's sort of stuck out here like it says there's, there's no penalty for wrong answers now. right what is that that's a nice <laughs> how change. is that different that that's a big difference <laughs> um, the SAT used to penalize you a quarter point for a wrong answer so if you left it blank you didn't get a point but you didn't lose a point okay. if you guessed or were just incorrect for any reason you lost a quarter point so one of the strategies you had to have to be successful on the SAT was to know when to guess and when not to guess. Oh, okay. And they took that away. So now, just as with the ACT, there's no penalty for a wrong answer. So in fact, now we're, you will fill in every block, even if you're just randomly putting in letters, because you might get lucky. So how does that does it, how does that help with your overall? Well, art? some kids, you know, they might get it down to two answers oh, yeah. and then so it's worth guessing oh, okay. but they have a bad day and so they kept, get, keep guessing wrong when you know the difference between scores can be you know tied to only three or four questions oh, okay. so you could really hurt yourself pretty badly if you happen to have a bad guessing day oh, okay. and now that won't be relevant oh, okay now is the score i'm trying to think back to my day is it still 1600 well high? now it's going back to that it had gone to 2,400. Oh, okay. When they made the essay compulsory, they gave it an 800 score. Oh, okay. It was the essay in writing. Um, and they are taking that away. And they're saying, OK, you still get 800. You took the maximum score for math is 800. The maximum score for critical reading mm -hmm. is now 800. The writing, since it's optional, will be test will be graded differently. That one will be graded on a, um, a different score, and, and it'll be three different areas: um, your comprehension, your analysis, and your writing style. You'll get a step a step of course. And now you're saying, I, I'm trying to think. I don't think we had a writing one when I took it. Well, you're saying the writing now is, is optional. It's optional. And when what is what is the writing? It's an essay. And uh, uh, kind of and the essay is an analysis of an argument that someone has made. So one example is. Uh, in one of our diagnostic tests, there was um, uh, President Nixon gave a speech on television to the American public about his strategy in Vietnam. And he was arguing to the American public why he thought it was the right strategy. Um, and it's a probably, uh, it's probably about a 400 page, a uh, 400 word. Um, so they actually give, the, they they actually give, the, give the words thing. that Nixon right spoke. Right there. OK. OK. So you read that. Mm -hmm. um, now you're, they, you will be asked some questions on what, I'm sorry. So then you will be asked questions on what are you going to do with this? You're supposed to write an essay mm -hmm. um, analyzing how did Nixon make his Argument. Okay, but you don't have to, like you were saying before. You don't have, to have prior knowledge of the no. war or anything. All this. They it's, don't. It's, in fact, it's very clear. They do not want your opinion. They don't want you to say whether he was right or wrong. So you're writing based on those 400 words, and you're only writing on an analysis. As okay. part of that analysis, though, they will be able to tell: Did you understand okay. the argument? And did you analyze it properly? Did you recognize what he was doing? Um, and then they will also judge you on well. And how do you write? Oh. Do you write well? Um, you know, it, are your sentences, do they vary in length, do they vary in complexity, is your vocabulary good? Those kinds of things, and you get three different scores. And now what's the, the essay part? Uh, is that time, or do you only Yes, you each, only each section's time, so the essay you get 50 minutes. Do they tell you how much you can write, or they just? No, right. about 50 minutes. Right. Generally, you'll be, um, you'll be reading, and then you'll be doing a small outline, just so you know where you're going. 
um, and then you'll start writing. It's t 15 minutes is still a lot. Is is not a lot of time to write no. a concise essay, even about a very short passage. So now that so the test is vocabulary, math, and essay. Is that what you're? Well, no. So now it's well. You said vocabulary. You mean critical reading? I meant you know, the reading. Right. right. Okay. So critical reading, math. Essay. Okay. Now, and how many kids opt out of the writing? Do you? Do, do you? I have no idea. And the, right now, we actually don't know because the first S new SAT will only be in March. Um, oh, okay. January's but, was the last old format um, that it was not. It was not optional, so everyone had to write. Oh, the okay, okay. So, so this time is okay. Yep. Yeah. So how? Have you, you know, I know this is your business. Right. Have you seen any of the new tests yet? Or you oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> you know, they've released the test. So, you know, our program includes five diagnostic tests um, where you will actually be able to take the test. Um, so we've seen what they are. Uh, I think it's a tougher test. Mm -hmm. uh, I do think it's a fairer test in cer certain ways. Mm -hmm. um, I think kids who have done well throughout high school um, stand probably a better chance of doing well on this test um, because it's a look the vocabulary is now realistic and that used to throw a lot of kids yeah. um, I think the essay is more direct you know you don't know what you're gonna write about but you know what you're gonna write and you know what's expected and okay. you also know what you're not gonna be writing okay so in the, up at the Sullivan Learning Center yep. where, where your business here what kind of um, for the tutoring and stuff what kind of subjects do the kids come for the most, or is it pretty evil, equally? No, most in Sylvan, uh, we do a variety of tutoring. So we do personalized tutoring for kids K through 12 um, in math, reading, writing, study skills, homework support, regions prep, and then SAT and ACT okay. prep. Um, SAT and ACT prep is probably only 10% yeah. of what we do because um, it's focused at certain times of the year. Um, we're open year round, so kids are coming to us. Um, at uh, for a variety of reasons, um, this is actually a very uh, busy time for us mm -hmm. because, you know, after that first report card, a kid might be struggling a bit, but they may say to mom and dad, "You know what? I just had a bad start. I'm okay. I'm going to. I got this." And mom and dad kind of would like to think that, and they want to give them a chance. So they'll. Oft sometimes we'll get kids will come in then, but often we won't. After the second report card, same kind of thing. Um, that's, you know, we see a few more kids. Now, next week, the third report cards are coming out. We start to see a lot of kids okay. um, because people start to realize, like, oh, I have got to get this together, um, that uh, we don't want them to fall any further behind. Um, so for example, though, in our reading course, I mean, our math course, uh, sorry, math tutoring program, um, parents will also come in saying, you know, he's really, he's been struggling with math for a while. Um, and they'll ask, well, is this a new struggle? And sometimes they'll say, well, not really. Um, but he was doing OK. And so we will talk to them more to discover, like, maybe what they think is a math problem might be actually a reading yeah. problem. Because okay. you know, the word problems are so critical in the Common Core math now. And so kids will come in, and we'll assess them in both reading and math to see, well, what is the problem? We assess them, then we, then we create a personalized program for them to address it. Uh, now, do you think, I hate to keep harkening back to my yeah. day, but <laughs> do you think um, students, they take the SAT or ACT, do you think they, is it, they take it more serious than, I, I than our day, I guess? I, yeah, part. right. <laughs> I, I think that they do. Um, I think the kids are more driven. Um, they they seem more focused. They are very focused. Um, I think, you know, back when we took it, I don't think there was as much prep. There was some prep. Yeah. I certainly didn't prepare, and I don't remember but I don't it being even available. Think when I took it in, in the early 70s, mid 70s, I don't even think there were places where you could take classes. Yeah, I don't, I don't think. You know, the, the first one I think might have been around then, but yeah, okay. just beginning and probably only in big cities. Um, but now there's such a range of, mm -hmm. of availability. And I think the other thing is, People understand better how many people are actually preparing, yeah. and if you want to get into a competitive school, you know you have to do what everyone else is doing at least. Well, I think. I mean, I tell people that look at you're about to apply, especially for kids who are applying to competitive schools. Mm -hmm. I said, you've done what you can to control your grades at this point, um, and presumably you've also done what you can to control being in clubs, having outside interests, you know, stuff that rounds you out, and you're going to do your essay. So the SAT score is also an important part of the application. Aren't you going to want to make sure that you put your best foot forward? The only way to do that is to prepare. I see. And then I think with the, with the cost of college, I mean, kids, right? They want to. And you know, some colleges 
many of the competitive schools um, actually will say there is a merit scholarship that you will get if your SAT score is above whatever their number is. And it varies from school to school what that number is. Um, I know my own niece is applying to schools. And um, some of the schools that she'd applied to, it's like, if you get over you know, 1,900, you get an automatic X thousand dollars. OK. Um, so for what you've seen of the test, you've, mm -hmm. you've seen the new one. I know you mentioned a little bit a second ago, but right. is, do you do you think it's more real world centered and relevant and current? And yeah, it's certainly it's a much it's a better test. Oh, okay. um, I think the real challenge initially is going to be how do kids do on this test? Yeah. Um, we've had no experience with it. Um, the first one in March, actually, they're telling us that the scores for the March exam will not be available until after the math exam, which is quite a long time. It makes sense they have to analyze. Um, the scores have to figure, they're going to discover sections that they thought kids would do well and they won't. So I, they're going to do whatever it is they do. It's going to take them a while. Um, long term, I think it will all, they'll work out all the bugs. Short term, we'll see what happens. You know, I think it's a mention, for example, in the math, but reading as well, they have questions there that are really two part questions. Yeah. And the problem is, or they have, they have some of those, but they also have two questions that are related to each other. And in each of those instances, if you don't get the first part right, or the first question right, yeah. you virtually can't get the second question right. So you know, by testing two pieces, you can end up really messing up someone's score. Because okay. they're, it's like, well, they did have half of it, right. but um, they're not getting any credit. And I noticed uh, one thing here in the library, because um, we're, we're involved with you know, students and things. Mm -hmm. There's this new push now. I don't know if it's reflected in, in the test, but for kids to read nonfiction, more than they used to as opposed to, like you said, Pride and Prejudice before. And right. I don't know. If and I think that they, they said um, like on the test, the passages are, there will be at least one passage from history, so American history, yeah. world history. They want the passages to mean something to the students. And I think the expectation is, again, that real life does require you to read you know, dry material. Yeah. Um, re you know, real life doesn't say, okay, you know, here's a work project that is written in fiction. You know? <laughs> you know, it is going to be something that is going to be dry that you need to be able to follow it, understand what was written, and be able to analyze and explain it. Well, I say one of the three main points is this, I guess I could come under data a analysis. Is that, um... Data analysis, it could, um, because some of that may be tied to um, charts. Yeah. Or, you know, I think what they want, they, they want, want real world. It seems like the real world. Exactly. Experience. They want you to show that the kinds of things that your boss might actually do, <laughs> you actually can do now, at least at some level. Because these are things that will have been taught throughout high school. Yeah, I see. Your, your boss isn't going to be asking you about Paradise Lost. But Probably not. John, no. <laughs> no. So before we finish up here, yeah. why don't you just, um, just tell us a little bit about Sylvan, how people can get in contact. And, sure. You know, and some of this. So you can come to the website, sylvanlearningcenter.com. Um, you can also visit us at uh, either of our centers. We have one at Sylvan in Albany, is near Crossgates Mall, it's okay. on Washington Ave Extension. Um, we also have one in Clifton Park. Uh, the Clifton Park is on 10 Maxwell Drive, it's also exit 9 off the Northway. Um, we also do teach um, two days a week at the Bethlehem YMCA. We consider that a satellite. Okay. Um, so uh, people can get to us in a variety they of ways. The phone number uh, is for our admissions, and that covers both centers, uh, is 518-869-6005. Again, that's on our website. Okay. And, and uh, I asked you before we started, how how is business in 2016 for the Business <laughs> is good. You know, business is good. Look at, uh, sadly, the Common Core is really frustrating a lot of parents because parents are coming to me and saying, I can't believe I'm saying this, but I can't help my fifth grader oh. with their math. Oh, okay. um, and so they come to us with that. Um, I think parents uh, are ambitious for their kids, and they recognize that school can't address every kid's every need. Um, ultimately, the teachers do the best they can, but teachers are teaching groups of kids. And they will spend some individual time, but if a kid in sixth grade is struggling in sixth grade because they never really mastered fourth and fifth grade skills, mm -hmm. so reading comprehension skills, math skills, whatever they are, the sixth grade teacher, she's not teaching those skills anymore. If she taught, you know, yeah. she's a sixth grade teacher. She doesn't really have time to do that. She'll do the best she can, but our program will identify, well, was it fourth and fifth grade skills? Which ones? We'll teach you those. Now you're ready 
for that sixth grade skill that's being taught currently. Oh, okay. Well, thank you, Patrick, for um, coming down and explaining this. I'm glad I don't have to take the test again. <laughs> <laughs> so thanks, thanks for telling us about Sylvan Learning. You can find it on the website. It will be on the screen here. Okay. And perhaps we'll see you down the, down the line here. Okay, great. And we'll see you next time on Getting to Know You.